Thank you. Well, it's a great uh, privilege to be here. I'm learning a lot, and I always learn a lot from Tim, but your uh, ideal city is going to be Canada Water, Tim. I make that promise in front of uh, the several hundred people here. Uh, what I have had uh, in my last 30 years of, of work has been a huge privilege, and Tim mentioned you know, the person in the middle, and uh, I have been very lucky to have either been the development director or the chief executive uh, of a reasonably sized business, certainly a business with capabilities, uh, and now I'm uh, a reasonably uh, senior person in a, in a much bigger business. And we have had huge opportunities, I've had huge opportunities, and this is a development in, in Birmingham that got me thinking um, about families and children and why that would be good for development. Now, Birmingham as a city uh, was doing very badly economically in the, in the 70s. It had been built in the 60s mainly for the car. And the city fathers, the politicians and uh, people interested wanted to do something about it to encourage people to come and work in the city uh, and to live back in the city centre. Uh, and that large piece of, uh, of land there, sorry, I will... Uh, go back, uh, was right on the west of the city centre and they connected the city. They got rid of the cars from most of the city. They had the largest pedestrianised programme. King's Cross was something that uh, I was able to, to take the company into uh, almost 20 years ago today and it's all of the lands to the north and bet between those railway stations. Uh, it was surrounded by, it still is surrounded by, uh, a lot of residents, but public housing residents. Uh, and a lot of those estates had actually quite good play areas, but they were very disused, uh, very um, badly looked after. And there was big territorial issues where some of the kids from estates just couldn't go across the road and play in some of the others. So I started to, to, to wonder why that was uh, such a problem. And... Um, Thinking I was uh, retiring a few years ago, uh, I was asked if I wanted to come and run uh, this development. Uh, and this, I think, is just the most amazing opportunity. Uh, you can see the centre of London uh, in the image there. Now, what we did at uh, Brindley Place in, in Birmingham uh, was not particularly child-friendly. It was uh, an office development. We did some, some private housing, which was uh, interesting. I think it was the first private housing in a, in a major city centre for several, several decades. Um, but what we did notice with that public space and the little fountain was how families, particularly at weekends and in holidays, uh, wandered through the city that had now been connected and they started playing in the fountain uh, and in fact some of the kids started to try and swim, which uh, we had to stop because the fountain at that time uh, was treated with chemicals which uh, were not great to, to swallow. But I started to, to think about journeying and people just going out with their families uh, and then enjoying uh, just being out, walking around. Now, at King's Cross, having seen the kids playing in the fountain in Birmingham, I said to our design team, I want the biggest fountain in the world, uh, but I also want you to be able to turn it off so we can have big concerts and events. Uh, and this 1,080 jet fountain, I don't know if it's the biggest by area, uh, but every one of those jets is controlled, and if I had the app here, I could control uh, those jets from here uh, and get some of my old colleagues wet if I wanted to. Um, and at Canada Water, you hear uh, an expression placemaking a lot in, in the UK, and I find that very condescending most of the time, because often where we develop, there already is a place, uh, and quite often a very much loved place, and particularly at Canada Water, the 30,000 residents that live there love, generally love where they live, and they love some of the amazing spaces and parks that they have around. So why did I get particularly interested in kids and play? Well, this is me uh, 20 years ago uh, with my two sons, and we were lucky living in London. We had a park about five minutes uh, down the road, and we used to go there a lot for cycling and football in particular. We used to kick a ball up against a wall uh, and play around. Uh, and I felt very privileged 
to be able to do that. I wouldn't let my kids go there on their own because there was a few roads to cross. But as time goes on, uh, this is my mother who's 91 tomorrow, um, I'm much more interested. This is entirely a selfish life I'm living here and everything I'm developing is entirely for me and my life stage. Uh, but that's quite a good way to think about things because we all were kids and we're all going to be old. And actually, what's the difference between creating amazing environments for elderly and amazing environments for kids? And in fact, amazing environments for both those spectrums of life suit everyone else in the middle as well. So it's just so obvious to me. Uh, and why not have buggy racing? You know, I'm definitely going to have buggy racing at Canada Water where some of the elderly, you know, I used to drive a car very fast when I was young and motorbikes. And I'm sure my mother will as well. So at King's Cross, we started looking at um, connections, how to make a whole new piece of central London. And all of this stuff is available uh, on uh, various webs. But what I did, and this is roughly when I met Tim, I wrote this document saying that we want to create these clusters and we want a cluster of children because King's Cross was such a down at heel place. It was known for prostitution and drugs. Uh, it certainly wasn't a place you would choose to go to you know, for some time out or, or certainly with a family. And I thought if you can get kids and families wanting to come somewhere, what better message could you have that something was clean and safe? Uh, and so to me, it was just entirely the best marketing you could possibly get to get families with kids there. And having just had two very active sons, we were finding, my wife and I, that trying to find places that were just great for the kids to run around and great for us to sit, have a cup of coffee, go to the shops or see something interesting, uh, was just the kinds of places we wanted to go to. We'd go to them more often, we'd spend more time there and we'd tell our friends about it. Why spend money on marketeers when you can actually get parents with young kids to do it for you? So King's Cross, the um, Granary Square, is one of ten uh, spaces within the King's Cross development. Uh, it has become known as London's Beach. Uh, and I have told Tim this story, he likes it, so I'm going to tell you guys as well. That was 2012, a very hot summer coming up to the Olympics. It was complete pandemonium. There were families with kids, there were ladies sunbathing topless, there were dogs trying to bite the top of the fountains off. It was chaos, and I was walking up the boulevard and the chairman of the King's Cross business he used to be a deputy director of the Bank of England wearing his suit three-piece suit walking up and he stood and he went Roger isn't this all getting a little bit out of hand what are you going to do about it and I said we're going to put more deck chairs out and he just kind of like he just gave up now why I think it was fine is because that says more than anything you know joy happiness, life, vitality. And if you don't like all those kids, there's nine other spaces. There's quiet green spaces, you know, there's beautifully planted spaces, you know, there's other public spaces with fountains, there's places where you can kick a ball around or throw a frisbee around. So just having a variety of spaces, I think is fine. And the best thing about that is the local estates, the local communities you know, who were worried about going across the road to someone else's territory. This has become everyone's. And I got a lovely email from a lady that gave me a hard time in the beginning saying, thank you so much. I didn't believe anything you said when you stood up as a developer, but you really have delivered something that is wonderful for our community. Of course, development's hard, and Tim pointed this out. You guys all know that. It's not just about public spaces and kids. It's all about these things as well, especially if you're building a new piece of city. Uh, there were 350 different pieces of rules and regulations that we had to at least take into account at King's Cross, and the planning process took seven years. <coughs> Excuse me. It's getting harder in London. It's getting harder, I guess, in most mature democracies. I haven't got a better solution. Uh, other cities in London would do it much. Uh, other cities in the UK would do it much quicker than London. But that process of going through uh, I guess a transparent, um, time-consuming process does allow everyone or most people to feel that they have had a say. So King's Cross is a 67-acre piece of city. Uh, in hectares, I think that's about 33 or something like that. It is the largest new piece of city centre uh, in London uh, for over 150 years. As I said, there's 10 new uh, public spaces, green spaces, hard spaces, 
It's becoming, uh, I guess, more of a central business district. Google are putting their European headquarters there. When they came up, the kids were playing in the fountains, uh, and they loved it. Uh, some of the businesses came up, and they didn't like the idea of kids playing in the fountains, and they went to Canary Wharf, if you know that. Um, but I think most people you know, are changing and starting to think that there is no problem with having families and kids around workplaces. Uh, lots of construction still going on at King's Cross, probably another five or six years of buildings. But get play in right at the beginning. So we were putting some quite exciting play spaces. That's a swing that lights up at night on a public space. Uh, we got these gardens in Skips. It's a fantastic charity working with the local kids, getting them to grow food, working with the local restaurants, getting some local business people to come and work with the kids. And some of these kids had never met a person with a job in their life other than a teacher. Uh, some of these kids from the local estates had certainly never met a developer or an architect or a builder uh, or a lawyer or an accountant. So, well, and of course, we could move those skips as the development came through. So getting play in very early, getting the kids up there, getting the families up there, making the whole development process interesting is all part, for me, of the play and education process. You can see construction still going on there, getting some green spaces in, some contemplation spaces. We got a, uh, a new school in there straight away. You can see the buildings going on around the outside. I see no conflict between development and making it an amazing place to, to live, to work, to study. And I think that's a very important. Um, it does take uh, a lot of wear and tear. Uh, and we replace the grass, sadly, I say we replace the grass at least twice a year because it wears out. But what an investment. Um, and all of the sort of business formal places as well. Why not make them great play spaces? There are no signs that say no ball games or keep off the grass or don't climb. And Tim was very uh, helpful with us. We call it incidental play. Everything, even if it looks you know, very highfalutin uh, and quite posh, we're designing it so the kids can have fun, hide behind it. And we keep putting stuff in to re-energize that. Go to King's Cross and have a look. Uh, but over the next few years, we've just got planning permission for Canada Water. Look to the left, 64-acre park. Look to the right, 40 acres wood and a dock. What an amazing place we have already. And the public spaces at King's Cross, they represented about 42% of the spaces between the buildings at Canada Water. We're going up to 59%. And we've got these green and blue spaces. I think my lessons from King's Cross is we just didn't have quite enough breathing space. I know it's easy to say, you know, especially when you're trying to optimize the values. But this is what Canada Water is like today. It's like an edge of town development. Um, very close to the centre of London, but what a wonderful place to embed a new urban centre, a new town centre. Uh, we haven't forgotten about the older kids. We happen to have the ninth best nightclub in the world, which I think you're coming to, Rebecca, aren't you, when you're next? In London, we have uh, 600,000 young people going there, but we do also use it for children's events. We have school visits there. We have games, indoor games and festivals when it's not um, a music festival like that. But I'm not just interested in kids anymore. This is back to the selfish thing. I'm getting old. All of these issues are very important. I don't think they are um, in conflict uh, with children. You can see I've still got children at the top of my themes. Notice I've got romance at the bottom. I think coming somewhere with ones you love, with your families, hopefully you love your families, maybe with someone you want to love, and walking, like in Italy, they call it Faraone Passeggiata, just going out between the buildings, just the joy of traveling and experiencing. Uh, and why does that just have to be for kids? It can be for all ages, but let's make sure that all of those places are somewhere where the kids can play and climb and run and jump and squirt water at people. Um, but the romance, I think, is, uh, is something that's really hooked, hooked me. And I mentioned that before. We're not coming into Canada Water to do something completely new. We're working with what we've got in the area. And those are the connections in our new master plan. Uh, I did say to the fountain designer, could you do something like the Angel Falls? He said, no, that's not sustainable. It's stupid. It's one gimmick. Uh, and they've done it in China anyway, so I'm not going to do it. 
But kids like water for some reason. Not Well, I guess we all do. Water is uh, what we all need for life. So we will be doing water in all its forms at Canada Water. We're working with Tim and people from Arup on healthy streets. Here's a few pictures of Canada Water. 49% of the land as public space is not enough, so we're going to allow people to climb up over the roofs of some of the building. Uh, we think that's going to be absolutely incredible. We've got the same Skip Garden charity there already. Uh, and of course, what's happened to my kids, having taken them out to the parks, kicked a football around with them. Oh my goodness, there they are. One's a, an apprentice footballer for AFC Wimbledon and one's at university. But embedding that health and well-being, I guess, you know, has set them up for life and hopefully they've set me up for life, keeping on my toes. Thank you very much.